My background is I'm an associate in a Blend B prototype now. We've been piloting since 2011. Um, I work in Woodford uh, in Essex um, and I'm an associate there working for uh, Lender Cruise. We did obviously we did have um, a practice meetings and it was something that was um, um, said that we were I think at the time you had to opt in for it or uh, apply for it and we knew we would go through the application process. We knew that there was something coming we didn't know what. Um, we were in the UDA system we knew it had it had its flaws. Um, so we would help, you know, we were quite open to adapting to a new system and, and, and seeing if we could make that work for us, but also help, like I say, change. Um, if, they, if it needed any sort of changes, then we could be part of that. Um, there were some um, lecture series, if I remember correctly, so there were some um, seminars that we had to go to um, about what it's going to be like, what we're going to have to do, um, what the um, computer systems are like, so I think that's an integral part of the, of the new contract is the, uh, the software and the software management of it, um, because a lot of it is tick boxing, and those tick boxing is, has certain algorithms and they come up with treatments that um, if you tick a certain box it will suggest this, that or the other, so it's a little bit uh, com computer orientated, but I use that as more of an aid memoir to what I should be advising, and then we um, each patient gets a printout uh, which is a, a treatment plan specific to them depending on the tick boxing that you do but you can override that so you do still have your clinical freedom so the transition from the pilot to the prototype um, wasn't huge um, because we'd already been implementing the systems within the pilot which worked for the prototype the, di the biggest difference between the um, pilot and the prototype was the way that we are remunerated enumerated. Um, so uh, that was more of a conversation to have from a business point of view as opposed to a clinical point of view. It was mainly uh, principals telling us this is how we're getting paid so therefore this is how you're going to get paid now so we had to sort of um, alter our contracts accordingly and it, we had all of a sudden we did have then a, a target so before with the pilots we had a, a pot of money this is how many UDAs we would have done per year so we were paid that divided up into you know sessionary basis so it came down to sort of an hourly rate. Um, and then with this, we had that hourly rate, but then on top of that, we had this target that we had to hit to get that hourly rate. So if we hit that target, we'd get paid exactly what we were before. If we didn't hit that target, if we don't do those UDAs, then we would get penalised for that. Ethically and morally, I didn't adjust the way I worked because I still was a believer in the care pathway, in the, um, the pilot, and the actual ethos of the pilot is more about prevention education. So um, I didn't want to let it steer my uh, ethical and moral compass in, in the fact that I know I have this target to fulfill however I will fulfill it if I feel as if it, there's need to fill it i.e. if the patient needs a band 3 I will do a band 3 and I'll give them the option of having it NHS or privately depending on the circumstance. I do I, I, I believe that the, 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 this new reform contract is, is a good contract for um, patients and for clinicians alike if you can make it work in your practice as a business for your demographic. So there's, there's various things that I would suggest that um, uh, practices look at within their demographic to see whether it is something that their patients will be open to uh, because it's a two-way thing. You can't implement a, a system to a demographic or a population that don't want it. You know, you're going to get a certain demographic of patients that are going to love this system. For example, the, the de demographic that I work in in Woodford, it's, it's quite a middle class area. Um, patients are quite um, aware and, and, and are quite educated and, and, and realise the importance of oral hygiene and oral care. So the extra time you spend with them, they, they like that and they, they find it very beneficial. And it's a matter of re-educating patients, but firstly, and most importantly, it's re-educating your, re your team. Because as dentists, it's confusing enough with this, this new contract and getting your head around it. But then you've got to also um, get that across to your nurses, to uh, the hygienists, to the receptionists, who once they understand what the contract's about and what you're actually getting paid for and what you're not getting paid for and how you're going to make it work for you, then it, only then can you then roll that out onto patients. So it's, it's a whole re-education of, of staff, dentists and patients alike. So when a patient comes in, they need to understand that it's just for a checkup or it's just for a pain appointment to get you out of that problem or it's for treatment. You can't, it's very difficult to swap and change things because you have certain amounts of um, activity that you need to do, but you also have certain amounts of access that you need to do. How we found that it works best is to zone your book. So, so you know, your nurse knows, your receptionist knows, and your patient knows exactly what they're booked in for. 
and that way you know that you're going to be able to uh, every day you're going to have a certain amount of time dedicated to checkups to treatment to emergencies to private treatment and you know every day that then you're fulfilling your criteria and you're fulfilling the quota that you need to associates need to get on board right so you need to work as a team you can't you know long gone are the days you can lock yourself in a room and start drilling and filling you know you've got to work as a team you've got to work with the, your nurses you've got to work with your reception staff you've got to work with your principals um, it's because if uh, because it is, it is a team approach and especially with this new contract it has a lot more um, uh, things that can be delegated to other members of the team like oral health educators hygienists um, that certain things within the contract that they could do, certain things that you're best doing with utilising your time to do things that you want to do and that you're qualified to do and letting other people do things that you don't really necessarily need to do and that they are qualified to do.